Hastings District Council, and I get terribly confused about Hawke's Bay and Hastings, but it's Hastings District Council, took the amazing step uh, last week of saying that it's going to put members of its 17-strong youth council um, on some of its subcommittees and give them voting rights, even though they're not elected. And we had the mayor on on Friday, and boy, did that interview get some um, get some share and some like and some play on social media over the weekend. Sandra Hazelhurst basically said, yeah, bugger democracy. Um, and all these kids, oh, well, they're all nice kids. Well, they're not elected by their fellow pupils. Looks like they're basically members of the youth wing of the Green or, or, or the Labor Party, to be honest. And these kids not elected, but they'll be voting and making decisions for adult ratepayers in subcommittees and committees of um, the Hastings District Council. Now, all the lefties seem to be saying this is wonderful. And, of course, the Green Party and left politicians do have a global strategy that you throw away democracy and you just appoint little committees of people who know best. And generally, it seems to be people who are green or, or left who know best. And this is a global trend, this global trend towards this kind of, well, democracy, Jim, but not as we know it. Um, and it would seem to me that alongside Māori wards with unelected Māori de- representatives, this youth um, councillor or voting youth councillors is part of that trend. A lot of people over the weekend sent me pictures of some of these youth councillors and as I predicted on Friday, their school blazers have lapels heavy with badges, very heavy with badges. Um, They don't need to go to the gym carrying that much tin on on their lapels, to be honest. Well, not everyone is pleased at the brave non-democratic new world being um, forged by the Hastings Distant Council. Uh, Amongst those uh, voicing their displeasure is Simon Nixon. He is a district councillor and he joins us uh, by phone right now. Uh, Councillor Nixon, good morning to you. Welcome to the platform. Good morning, Sean, and thank you for the welcome. All right. Um, Simon, what was the vote on this decision to give these non-elected kids... um, The vote... So I'm saying, what was the vote amongst you sitting councillors, you people who have been elected? The vote was seven each way, uh, with the mayor, uh, deputy mayor, and others voting against, uh, sorry, voting for the proposal. Uh, the mayor then used her casting vote uh, to tip it into uh, the positive and to agree to the uh, student um, representatives. Whose idea was this? It's hard to know uh, where exactly it came from, but uh, I suspect one or two councillors, including the mayor, were supportive, and therefore, it, once um, once the idea came up, it just seemed to gain monet- momentum. But I have to say, uh, I've, I had a bad week uh, the week before, and uh, if it came up at some um, other uh, meeting of council, I didn't wasn't aware of it, and I hadn't heard of it previously. Yeah. Well, one would expect, Councillor Nixon, that if you're going to fundamentally change representation in a council, albeit in committees, that sort of fundamental change would be something that should actually go to the ratepayers, shouldn't it? Yes, I would have thought that it should have. But in fact, uh, the student council starts at age 15, and go, as I understand, and goes to age 21. So 15, 16, 17 are outside of the uh, the legally recognised age of voting. So we're actually giving voting rights around the council table when, in fact, those same students would not have voting rights in the general election or in the council elections. Gosh. Um, I have seen some pictures of some of the people on the student council, and let's just say they seem to be fond, fond of the silverware on their lapels. What sort, how does one become a student councillor and is that a democratic process, Simon? Well, in my mind, it's not democratic, but I don't have a problem with that so long as the student council is what it says, an advisory uh, organisation, just talking to council about various things and, I guess, 
keeping an eye on things from a student perspective. But to get on, uh, they apply um, and are selected, I suspect, by uh, teachers uh, at their schools. And that is then submitted to the council who select from those uh, the, the students that they are, think are good enough to be on the student council. I hate so to say no, it, Simon, no, that sounds like a process if the teachers are doing the weeding out. And we all know how left teachers are generally and how unionised they are. You're only going to get sort of liberal snowflake kids on the student council, aren't you? Well, yeah, I think that is the risk. I mean, I think these kids are very bright uh, and very um, uh, worldly as a student goes, but there's still a big distance between uh, that and what is needed around the council table when you're dealing with a a huge range of issues that mostly require not so much expertise, specific expertise, but rather a good understanding of the broader community. Right. What reaction has there been over the weekend to what happened last week? Are people in Hastings interested in this or is it just gone by the wayside? The level of interest is beyond anything I've ever seen. Uh, we had, uh, I've had quite a few phone calls, but on social media, it has just gone mad. Somebody told me there was about 140 uh, notations on the council Facebook website uh, on the website, and uh, and every other method of uh, communication has been used to make their displeasure known. So you're saying the people or, or the people who are prepared to stand up are against this in Hastings? Yes, I mean obviously somebody supports it, uh, and and you alluded to that a few minutes ago. But the reality is, of the people I mix with and and talk to and hear from. They are adamantly against the proposal. Okay. What have you got by way of Māori wards? Where are you guys on that? Yes, we do have a Māori ward, the Takatimu Māori ward, which has three um, uh, councillors on it. Mm. But uh, And I'll just correct a little point you made before. They are, in fact, elected, although I didn't agree with the Māori yeah. ward. Did you have a referendum a or, or a, a plebiscite on whether or not to have Māori wards? Uh, no, it was um, the council decided and reaffirmed that uh, two or three weeks ago that they would continue with that. Um, so you're going to have the uh, referendum on that, on, on the Māori boards? Yes, and, and the council's very unhappy with that. I have to say I'm not because I think it is a decision that the entire community should make. It won't exclude Māori from uh, being on council uh, it won't take away the democratic rights. It just takes away the concentration uh, that we we have ended up with. Yeah. They're, they're great people. Don't, don't misunderstand Okay, them. and they're free to stand for election elected. like everyone else. Well, yes. Uh, I mean, it takes quite a bit of effort to get elected. You have to uh, you know, get some signs out and pay for those, uh, print brochures, knock on doors, go to meetings, uh, and generally get your policies out there. I mean, with the student council, it's very hard to determine what their policies actually are. Well, they don't have any policies. They're kids, Simon. 